agreed to, and I call the manager of opposition business. Speaker, I move that all words after that be omitted, with a view to substituting the following words. One, the House notes a statement by the Speaker in relation to the constitutional questions raised by the message transmitted by the Senate in relation to the Home Affairs Legislation Amendment Miscellaneous Measures Bill 2018. Two, the House, having regard to the fact that the public interest demands the early enactment of the legislation, refrains from the determination of its constitutional rights in respect of the Senate message. And three, that the, am the amendments be considered immediately. In moving this, far from the drama we just heard from the Attorney-General about this being some constitutional disaster, anyone who looks at page 859 of practice will find an almost identical resolution moved under the Howard government, that constitutional radical John Howard, uh, because it is up to the House to determine whether or not it wants to assert its constitutional rights. That's clear in the advice. That's clear from the statements made by the Speaker. The House would be determining not to do so if this amendment is carried. The second, the, the second as the Howard government did in November 1996, the second issue, the second issue that's referred to, the second issue that's referred to in the legal advice goes to the issue of whether or not before this ultimately gets taken to the Governor-General, an appropriation would have to be made. For that reason, when we get to the next stage of the debate, uh, and I'm referring to it simply because what part of this mo amendment is that the, question, the amendments be considered immediately, uh, that the amendment that will later be used will uh, contain these words, a person is not entitled to remuneration in respect of their position as a member of the panel. In doing that, the two legal issues that have been raised will both be dealt with will both be dealt with. Now, I must say, I must say if the government was so, determined, was so determined that this was a constitutional principle, why do you think the, legal, the letter from the Attorney-General to the Speaker car carried the final sentence? I provide the advice on a confidential basis for a li limited purpose of assisting you in the consideration of the Senate amendments and would appreciate you not circulating it further. If the Attorney General was confident of his arguments, he never would have put that in. But he deliberately thought he would play a game of gazumping everybody on the final day. It takes a special Attorney General to be able to deliver a 15-minute speech on this issue and not once refer to whether or not people who are ill can get medical care. But it was not referred to once. I'm not going to, to delay the House a long time with this, but I have to say, in the Attorney General's speech, when he referred to the 1,200 people who drowned, Whenever that figure is referred to, it should be added, half of whom drowned after the Liberal and National parties voted against the Malaysia outcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every single time. Members on my Every rights. Every single time. Members Every on my rights. Every single time. The member for Warringah has made clear that that was an error, but today's Prime Minister still stands by a decision that may well have been able to save not just one or two, but half the lives that were lost. At the press club, he made the comment, something, oh, you can't cut the number in half. Well, we nearly did. And it will always hang over the members of the Liberal and National Party who chose to vote against an outcome, not because they were outraged by it, but because they knew it would work. They knew it would work. And that was why, because they wanted to keep an issue running all the way to the election. What is in front of us now allows us to make sure that when people need medical care, their decisions around their medical care are made by people who are medically qualified. This legislation would not have been required were it not for the fact that those calling out, or it happens now, have taken case after case through the courts trying to prevent people from getting medical care. That's why we've got to this situation. 
And so, oh, complete rubbish. Now, there's a refutation. You're doing really well there, Minister. The, what we have in front of us now is a resolution, an amendment to what the government has moved. That does not in any way defy the ruling of the speaker, the information provided to the House by the Speaker. That allows the House to assert its rights in the same way that the Howard government did in 1996, and also deals with the other issue with respect to the Governor General and the appropriation through the amendment that will come shortly. Every legal issue raised by the Attorney General has now been addressed. And this all could have been done in an orderly way had the Attorney General not been so determined to keep this secret to get the element of surprise. Well, when the way to deal with this is already on, contained within House of Representatives practice, it doesn't take long to basically copy a resolution from the Howard government. I urge the House today to vote for the amendment, to vote for the motion as amended and to then vote for the amendments which will be used, because the difference they will make is simple. If someone is unwell, they will be able to get medical care. Because when were we ever told? When were we ever told that part of protecting our borders, as they say, was making sure that people who are unwell stay that way? When were we told that was a principle? When did that suddenly become a pillar of border protection? that people who are unwell, unwell need to be denied medical care. This legislation delivers the, the, the amendment will deliver nothing more than that, and I urge the House to support the amendment and to support the subsequent amendments that would then be moved.